I think I see that it is going in, but am I repeating again? How's the sound, guys? Is it okay now? Am I not repeating? Testing, testing. How's my doing? You coming through? How's it, Gary? Can you hear it? Tina says it's okay. Sounds good. It's okay. Wow. What the heck a way to start. So. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Um, sorry about that. Um, I've got to look into this. I just bought a new sound soundboard, and so that's going to be a problem, I guess, if it's going to repeat itself constantly. I have to look into what this new soundboard is and doing, and um, hopefully I can get the sound better because that's the reason I bought the new soundboard so that I could do it better. Anyways, let's get on to this painting here. We're going to be a little late here now, about ten minutes, so that's okay. We'll finish it ten minutes earlier, <laughs> so we'll be good. All right, uh, so. Um, We'll just not um, talk about the values and all that stuff on the thing and the supplies. We know all about that. And so tonight we're doing a, a scene about, um, let's see, we're doing a night scene and I did it already. And let me get you to the tabletop right away and we can get right going. So um, is it sounding okay, everybody? Um, just give me, somebody tell me if it's, uh, if, it, if the sound is okay. I'm not repeating myself and it's constantly on repeat. And uh, we'll go right to tabletop and we'll just get going here. So this is the um, scene that we're going to be doing. And um, thanks, Tina. Thanks for telling me it sounds okay. Is it too loud? Is it just perfect? Um, just let me know. And um, I'll just keep on going here. So the night scene we're doing is a scene from Venice. As a, when I did a workshop in Venice about, I don't know, four, year, four or five years ago. And um, this is a scene I took at night, and um, some of the scenes were great. And at night, I mean, I, I guess I could have used a black paper, but instead I decided to use a white paper today. And um, I already done this painting already, and a couple of mistakes I made. Not mistakes, it's just always something different. And here's the painting I did already. And um, it's what I did to change things around a little bit. And I just want to, uh, let me take you to this um, shot right here to show you, is that what I did is I took and I made this section right here, this area right here, I made that section dark instead of having it light. Because um, in the photo, it's kind of light on this side, and on this side, it's dark. Well, I, I think my center of interest is in here, so I want to keep this and this and this area light and to make the other parts dark. And so that's what I did here. I made this part light, made this part dark, and um, same thing up here. I made that dark. So that's what, the only thing I changed in the value study of this. And so um, I didn't actually do a value study, but it just in my mind, I thought this has to be light. And normally you do do a value study. Um, but uh, in class today, I just decided that last minute as I was looking at it, that I should be doing that. So that's what we're going to be doing. And um, okay, so it sounds like everything works now. Oh, that's good. Thanks so much um, for sticking around. Uh, I fixed that and we'll fix it next week for sure. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to start with the lights and the lights and actually Joyce who is online here too right now gave me a great suggestion on this one we did in class today and they put some stars into the sky which is a great idea because always it's nice to have a little bit of little specks in there you can do those with either a exacto knife or a little white paint and so I'll do that later on when we get to that point. So what we're going to first do is we're going to start out with the lights and the lights basically are the buildings so it's not so much from background to foreground but it's the light areas. In a night scene, what you got to think about is that all the light is produced by the lights that are in your picture. This light right there, this light right there, that light right there. They're all being produced. That's where the, the light is being produced. So that everything goes from there. So you can know where the shadows are going to be. And so by making this side light, it's, it's possible to do that because this light is on this side. So they're both pretty much in the photo the same, about the same value. They're dark. Well, I'm going to make this side a little bit lighter just so that we have this like concave kind of effect in there. Almost it's called like a formal composition where everything's in the front, same on this side, same as on that side. So this is going to be dark, this is going to be dark, and in the center, 
which I guess, again, is a formal composition, which is okay when everything on one side is the same as on the other. And so my center of interest will be in here. I also added a, one of those poles that they have in Venice right here. It wasn't like that in the photograph, but by putting one in there and making this darker on top of a light, that'll give me a little bit of interest right there, along with the boats and stuff, and it'll be enough interest. I could put people, which I didn't do in this one. I didn't put people in, but you could put a couple people right there. And I think actually in the picture, there are a couple people standing back there, but that's up to you if you want to do that. So let's get going so we can get done by an hour still. All right, so I'm going to go around these lights because I'm going to get my light effect right away. And I showed the class later on what I did last week was I put white in there and I used that, I used the hickey brush to kind of soften that. And I'll do that again tonight. But first I'm going to try to do is go in there with some orange color, yellow, always from yellow to orange. And this week I put Naples yellow down and it has it's a yellow with a little bit of white in it. I found out somebody told me that Naples is kind of like a more of a, a yellow that's not as vibrant. And so it has a little bit of white in it. And so that's kind of cool. So what I was doing before putting white into the yellow, it's kind of the same thing, but now I just have the exact color that I need. And so again, again, put a little orange on top of the more yellow orange. And I'm just gonna go around here and just soften that in. So the paper is dry. And as I go around this light, I get darker and darker as I go around here. And so I'm getting darker and darker. And so I'm gonna do that in this area where the lights are. And then I'm going to get the, the building on this side dark as much as I can, but not as dark as like right here. This is going to be the second wash because I need these lighter lights to be the top part, like the framing of the, of the um, window. So I'm going to go in there and get the lighter light, the light parts. And that gives me my colors, the colors I want to use. And remember, things get 20% um, lighter when they dry. So don't be afraid to put a lot of pigment in there. I was telling the class today that a lot of um, watercolors don't use enough pigment. And um, we need to use more pigment than you think you need. And also in this uh, scene I did this afternoon, I made everything in the background yellow instead of really bright yellow. Well, I'm going to get some cool colors in here because everything right now is kind of monochromatic and kind of in your yellow brown phase. And so I want to get a few more um, cool colors in there. So the background is going to be a little bit cooler on this one. I'm going to make the sky cool because that sky there is is a little bit brown and not as much blue in it. So I'm just going to try to get into putting a little bit of the violets and blues in it. And so I'm going to go in here now and just get this a little bit darker, but not so dark. Like I said, I still got to do two more darks within this. There's the next dark and there's like three darks, three versions of darks in there. And so this side will be a little bit darker. Not a pigment in there. Pick up a nice load of pigment. I actually cleaned my palette out here. Look at that. It's like for you guys, which I normally don't do, but I needed to see what I had left and I ran out of lavender. So I'm gonna have to make my lavender with purple and white. <laughs> so this is um, Gary's left in there. He knows how much I love purple <laughs> and I ran out. And so here we go, a little bit of, um, right into the water. And I can go right into the sky too. <laughs> and so here we go and put that in the sky. It doesn't matter what's in the sky over there because I'm just going to go in the background here, put a little bit of my, uh, this blue is ultramarine. And so I'm going to put some of this back here. And instead of making these buildings in the background more yellow, I'm going to make them in the gray field so that they stay back. I, I don't want these to come as far forward as I did in the other one. And it's also okay, but getting more dimension, put more color that's in the foreground and less color in the background. It's one of those things you can do. And so here I got to remember to keep that light this time because on this one, I kind of covered over this and I had to wipe it out. So I'm going to keep the light, light areas light. And then go back in here every once in a while just to make sure I get the nice glow of that light. And then right in the water, the water is the color of above. And so we just kind of do that effect there. As we come forward, now there's a light over here and a light right there. So let's do that right away. So go around the light with some water and then just take, well, the, yeah, go around with water and pigment. And then I'm just going to bleed it into that area. And if you have questions, I will look up every once in a while. I'll give you the answer as soon as I look up. I'm trying to go a little bit faster because we got a little late start here. Um, sorry about that again. 
technical difficulties when you buy new objects for your <laughs> to make it better <laughs> actually uh, just defeats the purpose of right and so here we go and now we're going to go into this area this area right here there's a light right here i'm going to go around it and then i'm going to bleed it i'm not going to um, soften the inside edge i can do that later um, i can just go in here and i can just take a little bit of the pigment out And I try to get as much done as possible on that first wash for when it comes to color and what color I'm using. I just got to get around that. So you get around and, and I noticed that the photograph is a lot darker than I made my painting. I mean, the painting is pretty dark, but I lightened things up a little bit. See how I lighten things so you can actually see what's going on there. I was also telling the class today that if you don't know what something looks like, or you kind of want that um, area, you're not quite sure what to do in that area, just make it dark because then you would be fine because then you don't have to explain what's inside that area. So just take and um, not on this wash, but on the later washes when the dark washes. This is a light wash, so you're kind of um, incorporating the colors you want to use through things. And so it's going to be orange blue is what my main composition is going to be. Orange and blue. I can put a little bit of yellow and violet in there too, but mostly orange and blue. We're going to get going today. So let's go a little bit of coolness back here. And as it comes forward, excuse me. Cheers, everybody. It's been a rough day today. I already had a Zoom meeting in this morning, a class in this afternoon, and now we're doing a demonstration. So cheers, everybody. Ah, okay, so let's see what we're doing here. And um, we're going to go right here, make it a little bit darker. What colors? Doesn't matter. Look for the values. Values, values, values. That's what's important. Get those values right. We get a little bit of yellow in there. And again, this wash, the first wash is about the color. So I'm looking for colors that are gonna be the light parts of the objects and stuff and of the whole, um, like if I wanna leave a little bit of white here, I could do that um, if you wanna know where the lights are gonna be. And actually right now I noticed that I'm gonna pick up some of this white because that's supposed to be a light there too. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this out of there. Just brush my brush around there. Must be a light right there. And I'm going to put white there later. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And I'm just going to take that down here. And so let's get the rest of this color in there. A little bit of purple. A little bit of orange. A lot of times in, in um, streets at night and stuff, you'll see a lot of the um, street lamps, especially in Chicago, I noticed that a lot of times the sky is really dark blue. And then you got these rich colors of um, yellow orange in the, in the street because of the warm lights that are on. So night scenes are kind of cool when you have these warm lights. They're very warm. They're very um, orangey yellowish. And so see, I'm just going to go in here and just get some, get some of that off of there. Just get that glow. And I'm going to show you how to get that glow again with just white too later on if you didn't get it at first. So you don't have to worry if you didn't get it exactly right in that first wash. That's fine. You can get it later too. And so let's see. I've got those colors of blue this time in the back. And that's cool. And so let's go through here. And anytime you're doing water, remember to kind of go back and forth like this horizontally to get these um, little these um, effects of, of the water, the, the ripples. The ripples are cool to get like that. And now remember, I've got to make my own lavender. Oh boy, things you got to do. Yeah, you bring your own lavender. So if you don't have lavender and you want to make it, it's white and permanent violet. Gives you a nice lavender. I'm just going to put that in here real quick. Okay, so we pretty much got our color, our first wash done here. And this week I also found my hair dryer, which I didn't have last week. And <laughs> um, a lot of things last week too that we had to catch up. So one of these days this is going to go perfectly fine with nothing, no interruptions or nothing. So here we're going to go in here now. And we're going to do these little shadows on the wall right away. Well, it's wet, so you can get the soft edges. There's gonna be a light right there and shining in this dark thing here. And just look at the photographs for what the, where the lights are and how you can make the lights look really effective in spots. And like here's gonna be really light, so I'm gonna pull a little bit of that light out of there, a little bit of the pigment out. And you notice when I do that, I kind of 
my brush is dry. I'm working on a, um, a towel now. I'm really liking working on towels because then my whole my whole setup is a towel, and I can just anywhere I'm at, I can just go like that, and I can wet my towel. So I, I really like that idea now. And so you're gonna see that a lot. I'm just gonna have my towel everywhere. <laughs> and what I do is I wipe off my towel and I pick up the pick up the thing right here, and then I go in and get some water and put some water back in. Not a lot, but just enough to make it so that. The water keeps the soft edges. You need water to make soft edges because it does it by itself. You do never have to soften an edge in watercolor. It does it on its own. Matter of fact, if you try to make it um, soft, it's going to look worse than if you just let it do its, its own thing. you got to let it do its own thing. I'm going to mute you guys just for a second. Sorry, but I'm going to do my hair dryer on here real quick. So this time I won't be going into a wet surface. And so let me just mute you. I know I'm here out with the sound again, um, but I'm just going to mute you. Uh, don't forget too, if you want to ask me a question, this is a perfect time to ask me a question. So go ahead and ask a question, ask away if you need to. Um, and I'll just mute myself, I'll just look over it while I'm, while I'm drying this. Okay, we're back. And so now what we're going to do, that's dry now, and so we're going to go right away into our medium tones. My medium tone is the tones that are not the, quite the darkest darks yet, not the sky and stuff. We're getting to like the middle tone darks. And like on this whole wall is a dark right there. And so I'm just going to go in here with some, some dark colors and at the same time cut out shapes of what's around there. And so I can go around this window. I don't have to really go over the shutters. I can go over the shutters, but I'm just going to go around and every, anytime I put down a wash, I always kind of look to see if there's some water there. And then I will put other colors in there. Underneath this little um, balcony here is a little bit dark. Then we're going to go on top of the window here. And as I get closer to the light, it's going to get lighter, right? And so and here's a corner. And so I'm going to take this down. Take that down and I'm just going to take pure water and take it down into the light so that it looks like it's into the light, right? Because that's the light right there. Go in here, I've been using some purple here. Some purple is dark. And purple and orange together make kind of a brownish color. So, and that's, you know, that's fine. That's a better way of getting than using the actual color brown. <laughs> hear that, Gary? <laughs> so here we go with the, um, there's some lettering down here too. And so if you want, you can go around that. I'm not sure what that says or, I'm just going to fake a few letters in there. So we're going to take that and just fake a little bit of what's that is. If it was a restaurant that I ate at and I knew, then maybe you put it in there just for um, purposes of like you knew that place and maybe you want to give it to the, the owner or something. But for something like this, I'm just going to leave it out. I don't need to know exactly what the lettering is. I, otherwise, you look at it too much. I'm going to go around these um, little edges of the windows to get the sill, kind of, the sill of the window, or whatever they call that, the outer edge of the window. When I get towards it, the light, I'm just going to take pure water and just let it bleed into that area, right to the edge. Go down on this sill here, and then this part down here is a little bit darker. And so I'm going to make that a little bit darker, and again, remember, it's about 20% um, lighter that it dries, so make it 20% darker so it looks wrong. Make it look wrong to make it right. you got to go 20% darker. If it looks right while it's wet, it is wrong. You can't make it look like what it's going to be. You have to make it darker than what it's going to look like right at the moment. And so there's underneath the chairs here. And again, this is a middle tone. This is not my darkest dark yet. There's going to be a darker color right on top of this. That's going to be a little bit darker. And when I, again, when I'm floating my pigment like that, I don't mind going in and getting another, another layer while it's wet and put some colors in there. You can put some blues, you can put some browns, you can put some yellows, whatever. Put it in there so it's whatever else you're using in the picture. 
And so here I put a little bit of blue because there is blue in the background. So this time, which it wasn't in this one, that one's all yellow. Or you see how it's all yellow and orange? This one's going to have blue in a little bit. It's a little bit different. Something I didn't do in the first one because sometimes you just forget. You know, you forget about things and you're, you're just working it. And it's actually sometimes the second painting always turns out better because you learn from your first, your first um, painting. Normally I don't like doing paintings twice, but this is the guy that got me to actually do paintings twice and it's actually kind of neat. And it made me realize that, boy, sometimes you do not know exactly what you're doing until you do it twice. And it's a good idea too, anyways, to do it twice. All right, so now we're gonna go and I'm getting all my big areas that are mid middle tones. So now even this side has some middle tones in it and um, we're just gonna kind of go in here and just kind of Maybe get a little bit more of this yellow. I can't even really like in this Hansa. I think it's called Hansa yellow. It's got a little bit more white in the yellow because most yellows are so vibrant and I have to put white in it and this one's already got the white. So that's kind of cool. Enjoy that. As I go back here, we're gonna go into a little bit of the blue and grays. Now remember the sky's gonna be darker so I can just go in here and just kind of get what I want. Don't worry about that edge. I'm just gonna go in there, get some Oh, there's a light right there, so gotta watch out for that. This time I'm gonna make that bridge back there more gray instead of the orange that I had it before because, again, it's in the distance. I wanted to stay back there, but I still want to identify what it is. I just don't want it to stick forward as much this time. So I'm gonna do this little bit of grays back there instead. Right into the water. Something I picked up and I learned. See, I, I, when I did the first one, I was like, oh, how can I make this better? What is it that you can do to make things better? And that was one of the things I thought about. Let's see, put a little yellow back there. That's fine. Put a little bit of color back there to incorporate a little bit of what's in front. And as you can see, this is not a dark dark yet. This is still my middle tone dark. Still my middle tone darks. And this roof is going to be darker than the sky. So when I do my sky, I'm going to go over this area, over this roof, because this roof is going to be darker than the sky. But right now I'm going to do the tree. There's like a tree back there, I think. And if there isn't, I'm making it up as a tree. So I'm going to take a little bit of this dark blue and this cronecardum gold to get a green. I don't have any green on my palette. So and I want to make it a dirty green. So I mix it into the orange a little bit. Orange and green work well together to make it kind of, a, again, a dirty green. And then we're going to go into the orange. What happened over there? So here we go. Um, on the side here, we go underneath here. This is going to be a light, but this side of the wall is a little slightly darker. A little bit of, a little bit of orange in there. Underneath this um, awning will be a it would be a dark roof, and then underneath here. I want to get some shadows in here, so a little bit of dark color in here, some shadowing. Like this light is coming from here, hitting this over there. Hey, Martha and Judy, nice to see ya. Who else was in here? We got Joyce, Carol, Mora. Thanks all for watching, Sue. I'm very glad I got my. Um, sound coming back and so you're not hearing me a thousand times. I hope it's not, I still I hope it's working. So here I'm putting a little green in here, this area too, just a little bit of orange or yellow in there with the green. That would be like a little thing coming over the side of the wall. Have a little light there. And you notice I, I put one little dark over here so I can regulate how dark I'm going to be going with things. This wall right here is going to be darker. Um, but I'm gonna, um, as soon as this gets to there, I'm gonna go right into my dark darks. I think I got most of my medium darks. Let's see, a little bit more right here. Oops, almost went right into my painting. A little bit more here. Because I'm thinking about this light. Where is that light shining? Where is it doing? What is it doing? Is it it's shining here? I'm gonna soften this edge a little bit by rubbing it a little bit. Um, this over here is a little bit too hard edged. I have light underneath that. And that's the light. Then, okay, so we're ready for the dark darks now. So we're gonna go right into here. How much time do we have? Seven o'clock already, holy smokes. So we'll 
get it done by 7.30, all right? So here we go, we're gonna go with the, let's go with this brush, we'll go with the half inch. We're gonna get my really dark dark, so this time I'm gonna go with black. I'm gonna start out with black, just pure black, watch this. Start out with pure black. And again, I was talking about this last week about why people don't like using the black, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the black, put it down, but now I'm adding blue into this black, and it'll be such a rich, rich blue, or black. Um, where normally you try to mix your blacks and then what happens is it's not as dark as you'd like. It never is as dark as you like and so, um, but by, by me mixing another color into the black, it kind of makes it much more easy to get the really dark dark, but then you go back and you put a little color into it. And you actually, you watch this, I'm gonna put a little bit of light blue in there too. Because the dark blue will take over what that little bit of light blue is in there. I mean, the dark blue is gonna, definitely the black is gonna take over. And then you got the, I got the Prussian blue in there. And then I'm gonna put a little warmth in there too, just to put a little warmth in there. I'm just gonna put a couple of spots. Negative paint around this tree up here. The rooftop is gonna be darker, so I'm gonna kinda keep that with my light blue. More of a gray, and so I'm gonna go on top of that. And it may seem weird to put like warm colors in there, but you can put, um, this is this is a dark sky. You almost want it black, so it's like pitch black. But when I get to the buildings, I want it to be a little bit lighter because the atmosphere is kind of making it so that you see a little bit of a light in the sky. Go right over the top of that roof, but that roof is gonna be darker than it too. So I'm keeping it from dark to lighter as it goes back into the distance. And you may not be able to see that. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm gonna Pull up closer and I don't know if you can see a reflection, but it's a little bit lighter on the bottom part, on the down here part, and as it goes up, it gets a little bit darker. So again, I need a rubber eraser right there so you can see it so it doesn't reflect. And then right away, I'm gonna negative paint around the building back here. Not so dark because again, this is not as dark back here. And then I can do some fun things on top of the buildings and, and the rooftops here. I can come back like this. And I can always pick up more black and just let that float in there if I want the top part to be a little bit darker. And later on when I put the darks in for the windows and such, it'll all come together with the darks. A little bit right there to show different sections of the window. Alright, so that's the dark sky. And that's pretty much all you need to do for the dark sky. And this time I will be putting um, stars in it, but not now because it's wet. So with stars would just not work right now. They'll do it either we're scraping them out or putting them in with white paint. And so now that's the dark up there. Now let's get our darks down here and let's work our darks together. And so let's work over, let's get back here. And that's a cool color, remember a gray. So I'm just gonna mix. When you mix your colors together like this on your palette, you're always gonna get a gray because you're working both warm and cool. So those colors will get gray instantly. So I'm just gonna mix those two together. And so as I'm coming forward, I'm gonna get warmer. I'm just gonna bring it warmer. I'm not worried about the um, about the water yet. I'll do that in a second. I'm first just getting that wall. I look for big parts. I look for biggest part I can do. I don't go to detail right away. I figure I, I've gotta find the biggest parts so I can do those really cool washes where I put down water and I, and I float a bunch of pigment in there. Because, you know, it is about floating your pigment, right? So here we go with a little bit of color. Look at that nice red, a little blue. I'm going to put a little blue in there. Even though it's in the foreground, I can still put some orange in there. Just float it. It doesn't have to be um, blended either. Don't ever think you have to blend watercolor. Watercolor does it on its own. You don't have to blend watercolor. I'm gonna make this boat bright red here instead this time. And so I'm going with the dark, dark red. And I first put a wash down of the back. I come down to get the bottom of the boat. And then I'm gonna take pure red and just float it on top there. Just gonna float it. And I'm not gonna blend it because it's wet and it does its own blending. Now I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna put it right in the water so you're not even gonna see the difference between the water and this boat. And I'm just going to go down here and just my, my brush strokes are always horizontal when I'm doing water. This is going to be the, this is a wall and it's kind of ripply because the water is wavy. And same thing with the boat and the bottom of the boat. You're not going to know where the bottom of the boat is because what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going and getting the waves of this boat right underneath it. Show the reflections. It's not a shadow, it's a reflection of that boat. 
in the water. And then I'll take a little bit of the red from the color of the boat and put it right into the water too. Same thing with the, with the wall. I'll put it right away right underneath it. And so you get the nice look of, and it looks pretty dark, but it is, it's nighttime. So I'm gonna go in there now with a little bit of water, blend some of this up so it's a little bit lighter. And some, some of it is soft edge, some of it's hard edge. So I'm going in there, softening some of the, the lines going across. And these are waves. And I, I was speaking to the class this afternoon about waves and um, how they're little mirrors. There's a bunch of little mirrors. The more waves you have, each one of these little things is a mirror and it's reflecting what's above it. And so when you want a lot of waves, there's a lot of little mirrors. But when it's solid and it's very still, then it's one big mirror. But right now we have a ton of little mirrors. And so if there's a light on, the light reflects on every one of those mirrors. One thing like a boat like this wouldn't reflect every mirror. It only reflects the ones that are about the same length as that in this area. But light, like this light, the lights we have back here, I'll show you, go all the way down to your feet because it's a bunch of little mirrors angled towards you. And I just learned that this week from somebody in my um, class on Saturday, whose husband is, I guess, an engineer and some she said that that's what she told or he told her about how um, water reflects and stuff. And I thought that's such an awesome way of explaining that these are a bunch of little mirrors when you have a bunch of little um, waves. Waves are mirrors, they're a bunch of little mirrors. It's like the water doesn't have color, it's just a mirror that shows what's going on above it. So that's the that side with the dark. Now this is, that's all still wet. So let's go over to this side and finish this side. So let's go in the background here, get our um, little little dark areas in here. There's not much contrast back there, but there will be light. And so I'll get my little underneath the underneath the bridge back there. I will get my boat back there. I'll give it a color. There's a dark underneath the boat here. And then right from the boat, what do you do? You get the reflection right away, remember the reflection. And look at if you look at your fo photograph, you'll see that there is reflections underneath the boats little reflections and they they only go the length of the boat they don't go any farther than the boat where a light is a different thing a light isn't this is an object and it only goes as far as the object goes the light goes on forever it comes all the way to your feet so lights are different from the object that you're seeing up there here same thing another boat another reflection then we're going to get this um dark from the sky in here so that's just a back and forth and then and the same thing with this wall right here is going to be a reflection Right, that's only going to go a certain distance. And you notice I'm doing it this time instead of doing it my browns and yellows, I'm doing it with grays because I'm keeping it down with the blues and grays back there. And as I'm coming forward, I'm going to get warmer and warmer. Now this side of the wall is a little bit of gray, but I'm going to make it a warmer gray. So I'm taking a little bit of orange and yellow and just going to kind of go in there, make it a little bit, I'm going to go around this pole, make this pole lighter. This is part of the wall that goes right up to the, actually right away, watch this, I'm gonna go right into the reflection. I don't try to show the reflection where it stops and goes and starts with the water because it, that you can do later on with um, when you do your dark darks and your details. I'm just gonna go in there and get the wall like this. And I know it, it's dark, but it's almost like, a, almost like a shadow reflection, I call them. It's, it's shadowing off the light from the water. And that way it gives me a chance to put some of the light on top of that. So I'll make it a little bit darker here. And then we're gonna get some color from the water down here. And so I'm gonna make it warmer. I like to use this orange, brilliant orange is called. Make it a little bit warmer. The water in Venice is very um, green when I was there. And so you can see in the photograph that's very, very green, but and same thing with around where we live here. It's all, all the channel lakes are pretty green. and But um, you don't have to make them that color. They can be whatever color you want them to be. And usually green in water doesn't make it look the best. I will get some of this blue in there. I think I'm going to try to get some of that blue in there too. Ooh, look at that bright blue. Just a little bit so you can get a feel of like it's part of the same scene. Put a little bit of that in there. It won't hurt it. Get in there and always see how my brush is going back and forth horizontally you can have both you can have warm and cool it's both okay down here because it is both warm and cool down here 
I'm going to put a little shadow across here with the blue. A little sign right there. There's going to be seats right there. All right, so we got our big darks pretty much done, right? Those are our big darks. Now we got to go into detailed darks. Detailed darks are different from these big area darks. That's, those are big area darks. Now we got to get into the details. So I'm using my smaller brush. I'm going to start doing the windows. I'm just going to work from left to right. That way I don't go with my hands over it. So I'm just going to go over here, start these windows, and start these, um, get in there with my detailed darks. Because we only have 15 minutes left. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Boy. So we're going to go like this. Down. Boom. Nice dark. Here we're going to go on the edges. Across the window. And then I'm going to make this one like it's lit up a little bit warmer. Get some, even some texture in there by going quickly. You get some texture. If you take your brush quickly across a rough surface, it becomes textury. Just a little hint for you. Little trick down here. I'm going to do the sides. I'm going to do the um, around the hard edge here around this uh, um, on the paper. See, there's a little bit lighter, and then dark, lighter, dark, and then um, it's going to make it up a little bit. But if you look at the picture, that's pretty much what it is. And then I put these little cross hatch marks on here, just like there's something over that. And now that's really ugly, right? Because there's no color in there. Well, once you put um, a wash down, remember, if it's wet, you can just float some other color in there. Take a pure orange and pretty thick, and I'm just going to pop it right into the water. It's always nice to have that in there. Um, Carol asked if I started with mineral violet. I used um, permanent violet, permanent violet, um, a dark violet. And then um, I did add blues to it also. Yep. Usually I use Prussian and Ultramarine. I use in there. This back here. It's dark. So that's a size, so I don't have to worry so much about that part. Down here, we're going to do part of the wall. It's dry, and so we're going to... Part of the texture of the edge of the wall has a little bit of that cross-hatching type of look. I'm going to put that in there and then take it across with a wet wash. When you wet something up, when you wet it up, you can um, just take it with water and let it just bleed into the other parts. Look at that little um, watermark. See how nice that looks there? I'm going to keep that there. There's a little watermark right in the middle there. It's just perfect for Venice because Venice, it's like falling apart. There's so many things falling apart in it, so it's great to have. <laughs> it looks just like Venice. So now we're going to go in here and get some darks in here. Detail darks. You got the big details. Now you do the small ones. And you can work middle tones too at the same time. On some of these things, it can be the little middle tones in there. That's fine. No problem. I mean, if you get them sooner or later. Now on this side, I'm going to go with a really quick wash right there. This light, this balcony is hitting the light from right there. See, this light is hitting right there. So. You have to kind of figure out where is this light hitting and it's hitting that side. Behind there will be dark. This is going to be, this here is like a little, um, what do you call it, a spout for the, for the gutter. And then uh, maybe here's a little door or something or this is maybe a door. And you use pretty thick paint. You know, don't be afraid of using pretty thick paint when you're doing these washes. Like, because once it's wet, you can also put other colors in there. And right away, if I do it down to the water, I'm just going to go right away into the water and just put a little bit of the reflection in there right away. And then I'm going to also decided that I'm going to um, put in the angle where the water is on top of and then just put in a little bit of where the water starts and the building starts. This one I'm going to put a little bit of dark in there. This is a, I'm not sure what this is, what is it, light? That's some light thing there, but because I made this light instead of that side light, I'm going to make it dark. Inside that sign or whatever that is, there's going to be a dark sign here and there. I don't have to make it that dark though, because then that looks like a hole. So maybe just a little sign. Maybe it's the street or the canal that it is. Maybe that's a sign of there. That hole right there is going to be dark too. So I'm going to make this little gray behind it. So the windows like this, look at one brush stroke. Done. Done. And then the ones that are here, I'm going to make it a little bit more warmer because the sun, or the sun, the light is closer to it, so 
for that I can keep the dark a little bit lighter and actually really light um, really close to it and then as I go away it gets darker and darker so this is more orange and I can put some orangey yellow in there because it's going to be brighter it's going to be brighter because it's closer to the to the light source and as I go away from it it's going to get dark and as a matter of fact you can go right here I can go right away to really dark dark a little bit orange in there same thing with the side of these um, pillars or the um, balconies the top of it top of the balcony doors more reflections another line and depending on how well your drawing is you know if your drawing is really tight of course you can do a little bit better job than this you can actually make it look just like the window that it is or whatever it is you can make it look more identical to what it is in the photograph but um, for this I'm making it really fast and so what I'm doing is I'm just you can kind of see that there's a window there but it's not exactly to the scale of what the photograph is and I'm just making things up as I go along here so that's what you can do if you are not worried so much about the exact if you're looser if you're really tight then you have to make sure you do the drawing tight too at the same time making sure your drawing is, is right on and make this a little bit darker there so the light again is shifting around here this pole right here is going to be a dark so I'm just going to make this pole on one side especially I'm going to make it dark and then right into the water right away and then when this dries I'm going to put really bright red on it like a red you know the spiral that they are and that'll give me some color in there here we got this line this little thing here comes into the water reflects all the way actually the length of that that's not a light so it reflects only a certain distance and we got these all right so that side's pretty close i'm going to get the light in there um after i yeah i'll put that in a second when i get my detail detail right now this is not my detail detail this is just the, the line across that so now we're going to go over here and this is dry now so now i can get my rooftops really dark i'm going to take solid black with a little bit of blue and there's a rooftop way back here on top of this building and that's the reason i kept the, the building back there not quite as um the sky not quite as dark as i wanted to so that you could see that rooftop see there's always a plan you gotta plan it out watercolor is about to plan and then this is the rooftop here that's really dark it's gonna take solid black and then add a little color to it like little antennas we can put back here it's a little bit too thick an antenna for that far back and then there's even let's see we're gonna what's my um and we'll put this down here and make this come across There's a little bit of something, I'm not sure what that is, and so we'll make that something later, like a bird or something. <laughs> Here we're gonna make a couple windows back there on that building. A couple windows. Again, it's a distance, so I don't wanna get too crazy with the amount of detail back there. I wanna keep the detail for up here. You know, that's in a distance, so a few things will make it look fine. You don't need to go super crazy with the detail back there. Here's a balcony. Now, where's my light coming from? The light's coming from right there and hitting the side. So know where your light is coming from when you're doing a night scene. It's very important because the, everything's lit up by that light that you have in the actual scene. Here, it can be a shadow across here. And so you can just put a shadow coming away from the light, sitting here and going this way, right? There's a door. There's a window 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 underneath the eave remember on the eaves i always like to put orange underneath the eaves it's just the glowing it makes it look like it's glowing when you put um dark or orange underneath an eave not sure what you put under adam but you put it under eve, eve. <laughs> oh boy cheers everybody <laughs> Here we go. Rooftop. Rooftop's dark. And I'm going to make this rooftop really nice and dark right here. That's even got a little bit of red. 
a little dark red comes over the top leads into the background so what i was saying before is that if you don't know what something is the area and you want to just fake it put it really dark and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take this rooftop take it across here take it down if you don't see something like what it is in the photograph of course you don't have to also see it in your painting so make it up and here's going to be a bunch of little dark leaves squiggle a little bit there's a what do you call it? chimney you have to what you call those chimneys and then a little bit of orange in here because i screwed up there a little bit and so we're going to make a little thing right here there's gonna be a door right here window And then over here, we're going to fake dark because I don't know what's going on over here. So just faking some dark areas. Top of this wall will be dark. Side of this wall itself will be dark. And negative paint around the foliage here, around this little vine of Bougainvillea. <laughs> I'm just making that up. I have no idea what that's uh... Down here. Coming around the side now, and then we got these doors in front here. Oh my god, five minutes. Oh boy, we gotta go quick. We're gonna go a little bit longer than I normally did because of our little debacle and the 15 minute debacle that we did in the beginning here. A little bit of orange right here. A little bit of dark. And the side of the wall and again in the eaves of stuff a little orange anytime like on the top here throw a little bit of brilliant orange on these things and it just makes it glow like it's reflecting up into the eave see that look at that nice and that was a trick by shapiro Irving shapiro my mentor and he showed us how to do that it's an awesome trick you can always um just by putting that orange in there it makes it look so cool then I'm going to do a little bit of, let's see, the light's coming from this way. I'm going to show you how to put lights in there, too. We got time. We're definitely going to give ourselves time. And let me do my detail, detail in the lights here. And we'll get close to show you how to put white in there, too. So now I, I'm on my rigger brush, and I'm going to use it for details, like these little poles that we have here. Um, certain things i got to wait for them to dry. So let's see the stuff that's dry already. And this little lamp right here is dry area so there's a dark lamp make it kind of fancy come down here and give it like it's on the holder a little fancy scrolling here see all that little fancy scroll work okay and then um, what else we can do oh we got to do our shutters here our shutters are dark and so let's get our shutters done really quickly so i'm gonna take my flat quarter inch brush Gonna get myself some dark blue, some um, some cracking gold to make kind of a greenish color for these shutters. And I'm the light's gonna hit the edge of them, so I'm gonna keep that light and then just go down here, keep the edge light, and just really quickly do the the sh one shutter. This side again, the side that's pointing towards the light, I'm gonna keep a little bit of a line there. Oops, I missed it. Oh well. So we're gonna go in there, and we're gonna get a little light inside there again remember once it's wet any wash if it's wet i like to throw a little bit of color reflected color from something else so a little bit of orange in that green just to kind of negate just not one color let it be um, a few colors so same color over here leaving the edge a little bit light this one i can see if i can't keep it light and this is okay down here These chairs down here, I mean, I put some chairs out there. I think there's some chairs in that photograph too. A few little chairs down there. It's gonna make them really dark, like they're silhouetted almost. So one, two, three, legs. And then the back of the chair is a couple of that. And then there's legs. There's one back here maybe, underneath the table. So just faking a few things. This is a, I put in a sign, one of those tent signs. Just gonna put that in there real quick. Specials of the day. Give your painting a story. 
It's fun. A little bit of that scroll work on there. All right, so this side is almost done, huh? A little things over there. Let's see, there we go. That's what's on sale or the special of the day. Over here we've got this bougainvillea plant I was talking about. The vine's coming over. A little bit of red in there. A couple of plants. See how the shadowing from the very beginning is already there, see that? If you know what you're gonna go on later, what it's gonna be, then you can put stuff like that in there right away. Here, I got that. This boat, um, there's a bunch of those poles like this. That pole, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I think it's still wet. No, it's not wet. Let's go in there and get some really nice bright red in there now. So I'm gonna take Scarlet Lake, with a little bit of this brilliant red, brilliant orange, I mean. Pretty thick, and I'm gonna go in here and make these, look at these little lines. Oh yeah, look at that. How nice that looks. It comes right up there. There are a couple poles over here, but I gotta make those dark first. So there's, there's hang on the side here. Same thing on this underneath the boat. I'm just gonna make it a little bit of line. And then of course there's reflections of those poles into the water. And then maybe another pole right here. One more thing with the dark here. It's amazing how things get so light when you're working like this. And um, oh, these windows are not dry yet. Oh. Hurry up, David, hurry up. I want to show you one thing. Let me just try this real quick. I'm going to shut you off for a second. I know we're at one minute over, but we're going to, we're going to give ourselves like 15 more minutes because we started late. So we're just going to dry this real quick. And then I'm going to put you on mute for a second. If you want to answer any questions, go ahead. And where's my mouse? Where are you, buddy? Here we go. Let me meet you. All right, so let's get this real quickly. We're going to go in here. I'm going to show you how to get the windows over here. But I'm going to show you how to use white paint to get some of your reflections. The most fun thing to do when you're when you get the end. Instead of using the masking fluid and taking it all off, you can just use the white paint and um, do just as good a job. Shutters, 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 shutter. The light. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna take solid white, I'm gonna take a lot of white, watch this, and I'm gonna be using the hickey brush, the hake brush, I guess. And what you're gonna do is, um, right in this area, I wanna have a little bit more of a shine, and same thing over here somewhere, I'm just gonna put a little bit of white. So what I do is I take a pretty thick amount of white, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take white and just put it right here, see the little round, that's really thick white. I'm gonna take water, I'm gonna pull water around this now. Watch this, I'm just gonna put it, and it's gonna kind of like bleed into that area. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hake brush and then you just kiss it. Remember what I said last week, was it? No, not kiss it, was it, um, what was the term we used again? <laughs> oh boy, yeah, what the term we used that we used last week. But you do it on really lightly. You just brush over it really lightly to get it soft edged. See, a little light. It just kind of gets in there and gets a little bit of the white. And at the same time, but see, this isn't too far away, but I'm gonna, light is here, it's hitting the side of this pole. So there we get a little light, light, light. And of course, then it goes right into the water here and there, it breaks up a little bit. Same thing over here, it breaks up, not right there, a little bit farther away. So see how I got was a nice soft edge there? And you can do that elsewhere too. I can just take it, um, where else can we put that? Right here. We're going to put a little bit of white right there. Take a little bit of water, pure water, and just blend around it a little bit. And then take a real, another little spot of it and just put it inside that water. And lightly, oh, what was the word that we used for that? <laughs> Not kiss it, it was, that's basically blending it. 
by lightly brushing it. See how you just get a little bit of light, it just shines. It just makes it like a little bit of a shininess to it. Now what I'm gonna do is go around and look for where these lights are. So that would be right here. So right about here, we're gonna get these little lights coming through there. See, that light is right there. I can also put a little dot of white right in the center there too, to make it look light. And also these windows can be lit up in a couple spots. I'm just using white paint here. There's gonna be a little white right there. And then again, about the same distance from here to here, Start the light and make it go all the way down. Put my hand right in front of everything. So here we go. See, so just right in front. That starts here, starts there, comes all the way down, all the way down. This side of this pole should be a little white because it's hitting, the sun's hitting right there, sun. Light's hitting right there. And then we just go in to make, put that into the water too. This boat top is a little light, so you put it right in there. Lights that are on though, remember, the lights that are on, you put into the water and you can bring them all the way down that light there next to it so a little reflection this way and that way there should be light underneath the eave not on top of the eave because it's not sun it's the light so everything that's lighting up things a little bit over here it's hitting the side of this edge boom 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 make those sounds too boom ba doom boom 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 say that Oh, fun, fun, fun. I love being in the white afterwards. A little bit of light coming through here. All right, I think we're almost done here. I think that's enough. All righty, I think we're going to take the tape off and see how it looks without the tape. And a little bit different, see the difference between this one and the one we did this afternoon is that this one is the lights and the, and the cool darks. This one is all basically the warm worm darks and stuff so either one you know it's both okay but it's just different just different stuff and so that's kind of the fun thing to do Ooh, one more thing i love doing little ropes so i do a couple of little ropes ropes are a thing that you have to put you know, little wires across the thing and i also love putting little ropes on things and, and the nice thing about it is that you can also put them in the water you can reflect them in the water little ropes hanging in maybe a little hanging there Oh man, it's so much fun putting white in. So many years I never put white in, right? <laughs> now we're putting it in. All right, let me get this tape off and we'll be done for today, for another Thursday. Sorry again about the sound in the beginning. Sorry, we went a little late. Oh, stars, thank you, Mara. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stars, um, stars you can either, and actually um, the we had a um, demonstrator for our club this morning talk about the uh, making dots with the um, rigger brush. You can do that with a rigger brush. I'm not going to do that on this painting. Let's do it on this one first. And so you can take and take a rigger brush and kind of put that. See how instantly you get the little dots? So that's almost too much. And so I'm going to take my cloth. Where is my cloth? I, don't know. I almost got a little bit too many stars. There we go. See the stars on that one. So that was with a rigger brush and then real lightly tap it. But what I like to also do is take an X-Acto knife and you can scrape them out or just take a, um, rigger, a rigger brush like this and just really lightly dot and actually put in each, each star and you can do the whole solar system and you can even do the Big Dipper. See here we do the Big Dipper and so, but not thick, not too thick. These are small, 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 small. All right, so there's some stars in the sky. Oh, too thick right there. You can always blot them, blot them one down. You can just do the C, you can blot them down a little bit and they get a little bit lighter, but really light touch. And like I said, you can, I don't have an X-Acto knife right with me. I didn't think about that. Uh, you can take an X-Acto knife and just scrape away the white, back to the white paper. And so, so either way, here I'm gonna put a little bit, that's too dark, too light for the little pole that's on top of the house. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> Thanks Mara for reminding me about these stars. It's a good, uh, it's a good suggestion. So spattering, dotting them up. And there we even have a comment up there. See that comment came by right when I was painting. So let me take the tape off real quick here. And so for another Thursday. And again, if you guys um, have ideas of what you're paint, uh, next week is probably going to be a beach scene. I had one of the people ask me, I think, I forgot who it was that somebody asked me in an email that could we do a um, tropical scene. So next week, Expect a tropical scene. I think we're gonna be doing something tropical. And so now that we're going into fall, <laughs> we wanna do tropical, all right? So here we go. This is 
today's nouns and um, hold on one second let's go to their end screen and there we go so here we are guys um, week number I don't know many weeks <laughs> and so there's how we did um, and we'll put this one up here on the side this is what we did this afternoon so thanks a lot again for watching um, if you have any questions you can also email me at uh, david at davidrbecker.com or what else uh, beckerart at gmail.com too is another thing you can email me if you need any help if you need to ask some questions you know you can go to my website and ask them there too uh, thanks again for watching and when you get a painting done please let me see it post it on my website or not on my website on my facebook page <laughs> just post it there everybody wants to see them so get get them get them over there somehow and either I do it or you guys put them on there. We'd love to see what you do. All right, so until next Thursday, we'll have another one next Thursday. And I remember, it may be a tropical scene the next week. It'll be nice and warm and everything, right? All right, so see you guys later. See you next week. Bye-bye.